what are we focusing on this week? What are our deadlines? What are our highest priorities? The point of team meetings with work are to get everybody on the same page and keep putting the vision and the goal front and center. And so that's the point of regular family meetings. And it can take a period of time that varies for every person, but generally within a, about two to one to three days when a child comes back from the other parent's home, where if you can meet with them earlier in that time frame and have it be the fun reconnection thing that you all do, like you do some playtime together, and then you talk about um, the things to pay attention to. And like, here's our family, here's what our week's going to look like. Here's something fun that's going to be happening this week. Maybe asking your child, what is something fun that you want to make sure we're getting into this week or a food that you want to eat this week? Let's review our family rules. And you don't have to talk about something that's going well or hasn't gone well because you're reestablishing what your rules or family values are at the front end here. Maybe at the end of the time period you have your kid, if you have your child for four days or 14 days, again, that always varies for families. At the end, you could do the family meeting debrief version of uh, what was one thing that went well and what was one thing that was hard this week. Okay, yeah, well, we'll work on it more next week. And if you start getting into this rhythm of regularity, you have this kind of like, we're setting us up in advance to prepare for what we're going to be addressing um, and focused on this week as a family. And then after the fact, like you're finding a way to have a compliment and map it out. And then you get your child leaves the home. They come back again. And you say, oh, remember that thing that we talked about? Let's practice it. We're going to be practicing it this week. Is there anything that's changed in your mind on how we should practice this? So then it would be a matter if you have that structure in place, it would be a matter of scripting in our family or in this family, in this home. This is what we do here. And your child's going to be upset about it. So we're talking about limiting iPad. Part of setting yourselves up for at the beginning of the time that you're going to spend together could be here's our behavior rules, like talk, sandwich method, positive sandwich method, something good, something harder to address, and then something good again. So um, uh, here is something fun that we're looking forward to this week. As a reminder, here are our rules and here are our guidelines around screen time. What can be really helpful is not just having um, a one-liner about we limit iPad use in this home and therefore that's what it is, but more like what are our guidelines? And I'll look on my website right now. I'll try to pull it up as I'm talking here. I have some guidelines for creating a screen plan. One of the things you can say is once you have your family rules, we'll talk about for discipline. When you have them, some of the scripting is that you've had family meetings and you said things have been stressful or hard here. And maybe you say in the mornings, if that's when it's related to, or after you get home, we know that it's been hard once you get home. And so we're going to practice some new ways so it's more peaceful or we're gonna practice some new ways to make it better. And then what you do is you propose the plan. So you say something like, um, now I'm gonna switch over to screen time. One of the things that has been hard around screens is that, and I always take responsibility to keep my child in the conversation and not closing the door on me. So one of the things that's hard is I feel like I'm nagging you or bossing you or shutting your iPad down and taking it out of your hands. Like, you know, something that you might be doing that's bothering them. So we're like kind of describing fault on both sides of the situation, just to like normalize that this is what's hard and we can speak about it and not be ashamed or shut down from it. And so we want to try some, we want to practice some new ways because we're going to live together forever <laughs> or whatever you say to your kid. We, we're going to practice some new ways to make this more peaceful and easier because I love spending time with you and I want to enjoy the time that we spent together. And I think you might too. And so you'll say, so we're going to create a screen plan and let you earn it. And that way you have control, you have power in our family. Here are some of the ways you could earn it. If your behavior is this, if your chore is this, if your academics is this, if your health is this, because we want to do brain health, because this is the concern I have for your iPad. This is why I don't give it to you as much as you might get in the other household. And your child's going to have feelings about this. What happens when you say, I can see you're upset by that is your child thinks, oh, so I'm just going to lay it on thick. And then you're going to give me my way if they're used to that, maybe by you or maybe from another home or maybe just because a little scientist is testing. And so in that type of a situation, 
they're upset and you know you've got this red light parenting idea in your head that I'm still going to follow through. So I'm going to listen and I'm going to still say, and this is what we're doing. So if I, I see you're really upset and sometimes we have to end the conversation and circle back later and say, so, you know, I want to circle back on this iPad and maybe you're holding it and it's in a docking station or somewhere until you've agreed what the plan's going to be or not. Maybe they have it while you work up the courage to have a boundary around the screens. And I'm just offering many solutions because I don't know where you're landing in this conversation yet, but letting them have feelings about it and then saying, let's not start right now today, but we're going to start tomorrow. So now when we move into encouraging independence and doing tasks that your child is developmentally capable of, I get it. <laughs> Getting dressed and brushing teeth. That's what I was saying with my four-year-old. Like, uh, you can get dressed on your own. Oh. So sometimes it's about being clear and specific. I'm not exactly sure. So let me process this and be intuitive and tap into and watch your comments along the way here. Sometimes, again, it's about spelling out the expectations. I really like doing this at the turn of a school year, as well as the turn of a birth year, a birthday, where um, I was talking about in my situation, like, oh, you've turned four and not to compare my child to another child, but he saw the little girl come up dressed and we're all like, oh, my gosh. and he likes that type of attention and praise. So, um, oh, you saw how that that your friend had gotten dressed and now that you're four, that's what you'll be practicing. So that's a key word that I say. And I don't ask the question because that's a fire starter. Are you, are you ready to get dressed? Do you think you can do it on your own? And I try to stay away from shame too, or put downs. What, you're going to have me brush your teeth until you're 14 years old? Don't you think you can do this? You know, like some of those things that we kind of hide as being like checking in, but really we're just expressing our own frustration towards a child about not being independent with them yet. So this is the balance of us becoming aware of what are we getting frustrated with and have we been overhelping and therefore we're invited to be clear with ourselves that the one or two things we're going to focus on are giving the right amount of help and being there for encouragement and structure and support for a matter of two weeks to two months is what I see it change. It takes for a kid to latch onto a new skill on their own with you guiding them and staying true to this is what you're going to practice doing. And then I love the word practice. So it's the start of the school year. I know that in, I mean, six years old could be kindergarten. I'm going to guess that. And I'm not sure what Great, what your child's in, but you could set this up as talking to the kindergarten teacher or the pediatrician if there's been a recent check in, or um, not that you have to lie, but I know sometimes that outside source and, and framing it in that way like, okay, Mr. or Mrs. so and so said, now that you're six, it's time for you to practice doing your morning things on your own, doing your nighttime things on your own. So let's talk about the nighttime things and what are the things that you're going to do, you're going to practice doing on your own while I'm with you. And what are, and then we're going to talk about the things that I'm going to help you with still. And so if we start mapping that out, you've got, again, you're hearing a lot of structure here, which is pillar six, if you've gone there after the red light parenting. And that really spells out some specific morning, afternoon and bedtime routines. So maybe it looks like, I'm going to say, getting dressed and brushing teeth as a morning routine. So it's more a matter of mapping out in the morning, we have cuddle time right when you wake up. So there's a picture for that. We eat a little, we get dressed right away. Maybe you cuddle in the bedroom and then you get dressed right away. And then um, you do bathroom or whatever. I'm going to switch this. So th there's always some version of like connection time, dressing time, um, 